what's the number lecture 14 okay and uh, the last thing we were saying was the definition of generator polynomial for the bch code okay so so let me write it write down the write down how it worked out okay so if you were looking at block length n equals 2 power m minus 1 you are worried about you you need to know about the finite field with 2 power m elements and you need a primitive element in that field okay so the whole construction is based on this finite field you pick your parity check matrix with elements from the with a court, I mean, with entries from this other fin finite field right and uh, finally after a lot of work you remember how the parity check matrix would look if you want TR correcting okay if you want a TR correcting BCH code okay I started out by saying parity check matrix is going to look like this you're going to actually pick even though it's a binary code you're going to pick a parity check matrix from with entries from f2 power m and how will i define my code i'll say only binary code words are possible but it has to satisfy the parity check matrix over f2 power m okay and the entries of the matrix were quite simple alpha power n minus 1 okay and then 1 alpha square alpha square squared right and alpha power Oh, well, let me write it carefully. Alpha square raised to the power n minus 1. Okay, so on till, till what power do I have to go? D minus 1 or 2t. Okay, so in this case, think of it as 2t because I mean technically you don't know what d is, right? You only have a bound for d. Okay, so alpha bar 2t is what we can say for sure. Okay, 2t, 2t squared. So on till alpha power 2t raised to the power n minus 1. Okay, so this was our parity check matrix. Okay, but we saw that describing, well, I think this 2t whole power n minus 1 is not showing up properly. Let me write it down properly. Alpha power 2t, the whole thing raised to the power n minus 1. Okay, that's my matrix. Okay, so so we saw in describing the code with just this parity check matrix is not the easiest job in the world you need you need to you need to view the code words differently how should you view the code words code words as polynomials once you think of the code words as polynomials and then you see all this parity check is telling me is the code word with binary coefficients the polynomial with binary coefficient should have alpha as a root alpha square as a root so on till alpha part 2t as a root and then we were able to simplify do a lot of things and see mainly through the minimal polynomial. So once alpha has to be a root and the coefficient should be binary, then you know the minimal polynomial itself should divide this polynomial. So we saw this code word will have to be a multiple of LCM of several minimal polynomials. Okay, And that LCM of several minimal polynomials we defined as the generator polynomial. Okay, So that's the, that's the important notion. Instead of describing it purely with a <coughs> parity check matrix, we find this generator polynomial description simplifies everything. Okay, so what is the definition here? It's the LCM of what? F alpha x, F alpha squared x, so on till. I hope this is the notation I used for minimal polynomial. Okay, F, F alpha part 2t x. You might see some books use capital M instead of F just to say it's the minimal polynomial, but any notation is fine enough. Yeah, so there are some simplifications possible, right? If you if you don't want to write alpha to alpha part 2t, what are the things? You can drop several things. Once you bring in f alpha of x, and since you're only worried about the LCM, you know, easily f alpha square, f alpha power 4, all those things will be the same as f alpha of x. So you can easily drop those terms, okay? So in practice, this LCM might be much easier to compute than and then, uh, then the way it's been written down is a fancy LCM. Okay, so once you write down this, you notice that this g of x is in fact a polynomial with binary coefficients, and all your problems of describing the code words go away. Okay, so you had problems because this alpha was an f2 param. All those go away once you know this g of x is a binary polynomial, and we had a very simple description for a code word of a code. Okay, we said c of x 
is a code word if and only if you can write c of x as sum m of x times g of x okay so we came to this, uh, such a simple description okay so so now now with this description we can easily count the number of code words we can easily come up with nice descriptions for what the code words are okay so the counting is what i'm going to do next okay so we had only a bound for the dimension so far now what was the bound n minus m times t that was the bound we said k has to be greater than or equal to that okay so i said it's a tight bound but we can get an accurate expression accurate uh, estimate an accurate value for k once you know this g of x okay so we'll do that counting now okay so for that let's suppose g of x is g0 plus g1x plus so on till g uh, let me say r x to the power of r okay okay so so i'm going to say basically g of x is a degree r polynomial okay so once i say degree r actually what will be g sub r g sub r has to be 1 okay it's polynomial with binary coefficient so it's only 0 or 1 so g sub r has to be 1 okay so all those things are will follow but i'll just simply write it like this just for just for the sake of keeping it general enough okay so gr x to the power of r so now how does an arbitrary code word look okay any code word will have to be what c of x which is i know a degree less than or equal to what what's the maximum degree possible okay so remember here i've said degree equals r which means gr is actually 1 okay remember that okay gr is actually 1 and here any code word well looks like this this i know already but here remember c n minus 1 need not be 1 right it can be any code degree less than or equal to n minus 1 that's the only thing we can say okay but i know this can be written as sum m of x times g of x right so let me write the g of x first g0 plus g1x plus so on till gr x to the power of r and then i'll say okay in a very suggestive way i'll write it as so on till mk minus 1 x to the power k minus 1 okay okay <coughs> right okay remember so this degree is equal to r so if this degree is less than or equal to n minus r what about this degree degree is less than or equal to n minus r minus 1 okay remember okay so if i write some m of x here okay the degree of that m of x has to be less than or equal to n minus r minus 1 is that clear okay huh i'm sorry it's what okay so maybe i'll redo this okay so is this clear see g of x times m of x okay g of x as degree r i want g of x times am i making a mistake here i think i'm okay g of x times m of x should have degree less than or equal to n minus 1 okay so it's the degree of uh, m of x that is yes so when i say this this is the degree of m of x i'm sorry okay <laughs> this is only for m of x okay so for g of x i've already written here okay so only for m of x degree has to be less than or equal to n minus r minus 1 okay so if i take any m of x with binary coefficients remember all these things are binary right so the gi and mi and ci all of these guys are 0 1 they're all binary okay so as long as i take any binary m of x of degree less than or equal to n minus r minus 1 what will i get i will get a valid code word okay any m of x with binary coefficients and degree less than or equal to n minus r minus 1 will give me a valid code word of the bch code is that correct okay and if i take two different m of x's Will I get the same code word? 
can I get the same code word with two different m of x's of degree less than or equal to n minus r minus 1? It's not possible also. Once I change m of x, right, c of x will also change. You know that's how polynomials behave, right? Two non-zero polynomials when multiplied will never give you zero. So, you know that will not happen, okay? So, since we know all that, now we can count the total number of valid code words. What will be the total number of valid code words? It's very easy. Number of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n minus r minus 1. Okay. Right. So, I am not going to write down all that argument. I think that argument was quite basic. Okay. Just based on this, this implies number of code words equals 2 power n minus r minus 1. Okay. So, from my basics of n minus r, okay, I am sorry, you are right, n minus r, you are right, okay, yeah, degree is less than or equal to n minus r minus 1, you have n minus r coefficients to choose, so 2 power n minus r, okay. So, from my knowledge of codes, I know it is a linear code, right, I know BCH codes are linear codes, what will be the number of code words? 2 power k, okay, so no, this I know is 2 power Okay, so no wonder I picked my m, m of x to be m0 to mk minus 1, which will give me exactly k, which is equal to the dimension of the code, number of coefficients in my m of x. Okay, so that is the that is the idea in picking that. So, in general, you see the result is as follows. The dimension of the code, dimension of the BCH code, k equals what? n minus what? Degree of g of x. That is the general result that we need. Okay, so this is what I have shown. Okay, so you know how to find g of x. You will see the way we do it, at least finding the degree of g of x is very easy. You do not even need to know much about the field. Okay, to find the exact g of x, you need to know the field. Okay, but to find the degree of g of x, you will see you do not even need to know much about the field. It is very easy to go through and find the degree of minimal polynomials. You remember, you remember how I found the degree of minimal polynomials in the last class. Now, you do not need the alpha power and all this. Just take the numbers, multiply them by 2, keep doing it modulo 2 power m minus 1, you will get different sets. Each set will correspond to the set of roots of the minimal polynomial. From there, you can quickly identify the degree. Okay. So, degree, finding degree of g of x you will see is very easy. Okay. Based on that, you can also find the dimension. Once you find the degree of g of x, I am telling you dimension is n minus degree of g of x. Okay, so doing this exercise is very very easy. Okay. But is finding the minimal polynomial easy in general? In in general. How would you find the minimal I don't know. I mean, once you know the field, you could multiply and find the minimal polynomial. But for a large, area, you don't know the field. for large, you may not know the field, but you'll have you'll know at least the irreducible polynomial. No, it's probably not that difficult. I don't think it's very difficult. One could do it if you just want. If you want a listing of all the minimal polynomials, probably it'll take time. Even for very large fields, see you can find irreducible polynomials easily. So once you find irreducible polynomials, you know how to add and multiply in the field. So right, and once you know the field exponent, the alpha power, whatever, right, then you can find its cyclic atomic So it's not too bad. Maybe you can do it. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Just guessing that. Maybe it's not possible. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So let's do this exercise for a couple of examples. Try to list out several BCH codes, find the n, k and g of x. Okay, So, we will try those things for several cases just to get some practice. You will see it is finding the exact g of x will require some knowledge, but it is doable in most cases. It is not that difficult. Okay, Let us take an example. First example I want to take is n equals 7. Okay, I want you to spend a couple of minutes to think about uh, Okay, I think we'll just do this real quick. I'll give you a couple of minutes in the next example. Okay, so we'll do this real quick. Okay, so the field field of interest is what? You need alpha belonging to what? GF 2 power 3, right? 2 power 3 being a primitive element. So, I'll say alpha squared is, no, alpha power 3, I'm sorry. Alpha power 3 is alpha plus 1 and then alpha power 7 is 1. Okay, we know that. Okay. Then I want to think about the t equals 1 or the 1 error correcting BCH code. Okay, so what will be g of x now? LCM of what? LCM of 
f alpha of x and then f alpha square of x. But what do I know about f alpha and f alpha square of x? Both of them are the same. Okay, so this will become simply f alpha x. Okay, and we did this exercise before. I went through and found out this f alpha x. What will be f alpha x of x for this alpha? It's very easy. It's a primitive element. I generated it like this. Alpha power 3 is alpha plus 1. Okay, so what should be its minimal polynomial? This will work out to be x power 3 plus x plus 1. Okay, if you don't believe me, you can go back and look at your notes or convince yourself, write the whole table, find the cyclotomic cosets, right? Multiply it out, you'll get the same answer. Okay, right? Okay, that's your g of x. Okay, so what will this be? This will be the Hamming code, no? So the generator polynomial for the Hamming code is 1 plus x plus x power 3. Okay, so how will you generate code words of this? Okay, any code word can be written as 1 plus x plus x power 3 times what? M0 plus what will be k? k will be 7 minus 3 which is 4. Right? How did I get this 3? Degree of g of x. How did I get this 7? It's, it's just n. Okay, I already gave it. Okay? So let's do t equals 2. Okay, what will be g of x? LCM of. Okay, the only non trivial thing is what? f alpha and f alpha power 3. Okay, alpha squared and alpha power 4 will have the same minimal polynomial. Okay, so if you go back and look at your notes, you'll see this will work out to. Right? Okay. Okay. How did I know the degree of f alpha power 3 of x will be 3? How did I know that? How did I know that? Yeah. You have to find all the roots of f alpha power 3. Okay. So, how did I find all the roots of f alpha power 3? You remember we went through an exercise. How does that exercise? You have to keep repeatedly squaring it. Okay, alpha power 3 is a root implies then what, what else will be a root? You square it once again. Alpha power 6 will be a root. Then what else will be a root? Alpha power 5 will be a root. Okay, alpha power 12 which is actually alpha power 5. And then after that if you square you will come back to the original thing. Based on that you know degree is 3. Okay, and then how do I know quickly know in this case that x power 3 plus x square plus 1 has to be there. Alpha inverse is a root of that. Right? Alpha inverse is what? alpha power 6 right so you know that has this has to work out this way it has to be a shifting of reversing of the coordinates so you'll get this okay if you multiply this out what do you think you'll get okay you can try it you'll get x power 6 plus x power 5 plus x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1 okay okay so what is k what is k 7 minus 6 which is 1. Okay, so what is an arbitrary code word? G of x times m0 that is it. Okay, so m0 is only 0 or 1 which means your code words are what? All zeros are all 1. So what is this code? It is a repetition code. Okay, so this becomes the Hamming code. This is actually the 743 Hamming code. <coughs> This is the repetition code. N equals 7 repetition code. Okay, so you see for n equals 7, you, you stop at t equals 2. Can you do t equals 3? Does it make sense? You will still get the repetition code. Okay, if you do t equals 4, well, you might, I don't know what will happen. Okay, so it is not even very nice to think about those things. Okay, so you will have to stop there. Okay. So let's go to the next example I want to do where I'll take n equals 15. Okay, so once I say n equals 15, I'm thinking of uh, I'll have to use f16 and then take a primitive element. Okay, I'll once again say 1 plus alpha. Alpha of 15 is 1. Okay, so that those are my uh, that's my starting point. And then if I think of t equals 1. 
I'll get okay. So I'll get what? What do I get? X power four plus x plus one. Okay, are you convinced? Okay, the only the primit the minimal polynomial for alpha is important. So my k becomes what? Fifteen minus four, which is eleven. Okay, so this this as I said before will be the fifteen eleven three Hamming code. Okay, so this we saw actually even from the parity check matrix. That's the easiest way of saying that this will be the 15113 Hamming code, right? The parity check matrix will have only one row in F16, and that will include all the non-zero elements. And if you replace with columns, you'll see it will give you the parity check matrix, the Hamming code. Okay, so t equals two. What do you do? G of x becomes LCM of what? F alpha x and F alpha part three x. Okay, so I know one thing: x power four plus x plus one. What is this? Okay, we did this. No, what what are the roots? Alpha part three, alpha part six, alpha part twelve, and then alpha part nine. Okay, after that it will repeat. So you know it has degree four. Okay, so you see always, even if I don't know the exact minimal polynomial, I can find the degree of f alpha part three x. Okay, and I know f alpha of x will not be equal to f alpha part three of x. How? How do I know that those two will not be the same? How do I know that these two polynomials will not be the same? How do I know one will not divide the other? Both are irreducible. See, that's the important logic, right? Both of them are minimal polynomials. Both are irreducible. So one obviously cannot divide the other. Can one be equal to the other? How will I conclude that one will not be equal to the other? Yeah, well, but it, if it's both of them are the same, they can still be irreducible and divide each other, right? How do I know that this will not be equal to that? Okay, I just gave you the list of roots. Okay, what are the list of roots for f alpha x? Alpha alpha square alpha power four alpha power eight. It does not include alpha power three. Okay, so you won't get alpha power three to be a root of f alpha of x. Okay. So that's the only way. That's the proper argument. Okay, you might have several feelings about it, but that's the proper argument to prove why this is not equal to that. Okay, so so for okay. So if you do the math and if you multiply it out, simplify, you'll get x power four plus x power three plus x squared plus x plus one. And if you have enough experience in coding, all these things will be in your head. Okay, you'll mug it up and then you'll just vomit the minimal polynomial. Okay, and if you see many books. Okay, in fact, every book in coding, towards the end, it'll have an appendix in which in which it will list all the you will have all the minimal polynomials for all the elements. So you don't have to really compute minimal polynomials at least for small fields. Okay, okay. So we can do the simplification here, but it's not so crucial. What is crucial is what is k? 15 minus 8, which is 7. Okay, so what you have here is a 15 7. Okay, well, technically, I have to say greater than or equal to five code. Okay, okay, but I want you to do this exercise and simplify this. Can you simplify and get me the multiply, and simplify and get me the g of x? Okay, it's useful. It's useful basically to get rid of the greater than or equal to. Okay, so I'm going to give you some time to do that. We'll see at the end of the day, just by the simplification of g of x, you can get rid of the greater than or equal to five. X bar eight plus x bar seven. X bar six plus x bar four plus one. Okay. All right. So I made the I, I made a claim. After the simplification, you can get rid of the greater than or equal to. Why? Just because after the simplification, I have written down this g of x. I can get rid of this greater than or equal to now. Why? Weight of weight of g of x is what? What do you mean by weight of g of x? If you view g of x as a vector, its weight is five. So what? So why can I get rid of the greater than or equal? To? Okay. 
Yes. So what choice of m of x is that? Yeah, one. Yeah, it's all. You take m of x equals one, then g of x is actually a code word, right? I mean, any any code word. What's the definition? Any any multiple of g of x is a code word, which means g of x itself is a code word, right? Right? Okay. So you see this exercise. Well, it's totally useless. It might sound useless to you. It helps you reaffirm those things. Okay, it's one thing to hear me tell you that all code words are multiples of g of x, and another thing to actually see it in practice, right? Right? What do I know will be a code word? Okay, one zero 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 one zero one one one, and then what? Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, this I know will be a code word. How? This is actually g of x. Okay, belongs to the code. What's the weight of this code word? Five. So that means what? Minimum distance is less than or equal to five. I already know it's greater than or equal to five. So it has to be equal to five itself. Okay, so that 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 means I can get rid of this less greater than or equal to. Okay, so it becomes a fifteen seven. Five code. Okay, what other code words can I come up with just with this code word? What else is a code word? Any cyclic shift is that the only thing? Yeah, once I cyclic shift, I can add. Okay, so that's the way you do it. You remember what is m of x times g of x? What happens when you multiply by another polynomial? All you're doing is well convolution, but remember the degree it never spills over, right? When you multiply by x, you're actually Pushing it to the right, multiply by x square, you're pushing it by one more position, and then what is the plus doing finally? It's just doing a linear combination. So the m of x times g of x is doing linear combinations of g of x, this code word, and several right shifts of right shifts of this code word. You'll see it will stop exactly where it becomes cyclic. You won't you won't let it go cycle around. That's the way the g of x is defined. Okay, right? Okay. Is this clear? Is it kind of roughly clear? Okay, so all these things are different ways of thinking about that m of x of g of x times g of x. In a proper classical coding theory course, we would expand on all this, take a lot of time, go through this slowly. Since it's a mod, <coughs> since I'm also trying to do some modern stuff, we will just quickly go through in examples, and I'll give you some ways of looking at it. Okay, so basically what this means is g of x and its right shifts form a basis for my code. That's what it means. Okay, so it's a very simple way of thinking about. It. Okay. There are so many interesting properties. I think I mean I will definitely encourage you to read about the theory of cyclic codes. Okay, outside of BCH codes, I only presented BCH codes. The theory of cyclic codes itself is so nice and simple and elegant. You should read it. Okay, when you get a chance. Okay, so let's move to t equals three to see what we get. Okay. What will g of x be? LCM of f alpha x, f alpha part three x, and then f alpha part five. Okay, I know all of these guys are not the same. They're all distinct. They can't divide each other. So the LCM has to be the product of all of them. Okay, so these two guys I know already. 1 plus x power 4 plus x power 6 plus x power 7 plus x power 8. What is this? F alpha power 5. X squared plus x plus 1, right? So it's a different kind of a. I know it's a bit of a pain, but try to multiply it out and simplify this. Believe me, you'll get something interesting at the end. They'll ask you for all kinds of interpretations after it. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I hope you get something interesting at the end. If you don't get anything, we'll give up and move. We'll see. Okay. So what can I conclude about K? Fifteen minus ten, which is 
5. So this I know will be a 15, 5 greater than or equal to 7 code. Okay, well let's see if we can get rid of the greater than or equal to. Yeah. We can. What is the expression now for the plus? Mm. 5, 4, 2, X and 1. Okay, so we didn't get anything very interesting. But at least we could get rid of the greater than or equal to. Okay, it's not needed. Why? G of X itself has weight, has, is, is corresponds to a code word which has weight. Weight equals 7. So I know the minimum distance will be equal to 7. Okay, so we can get rid of this greater than or equal to. So 15, 5, 7 code. Okay. Happy, do you want to try t equals 4? What do you think will happen if you try t equals 4? Okay, what will happen? Okay, go ahead and try for t equals 4. You will need to multiply by f alpha power 7 as well and that you know has degree 4. And so it will become 14, right? It will become degree 14. So g of x will be degree 14. Degree will become 14. Okay, so what will be k? k is 15 minus 14 which is 1. Okay. Okay, and you will see g of x will in fact be what? 1 plus x plus x squared plus so on till x to the power 40. Okay, so you'll see this will be nothing but the 15 1 15 repetition code. Okay. Okay, one thing I never told you, which is a very simple result to prove, also, it's very easy to prove. One thing which maybe I, I should have proved in class, but I didn't prove, you, it might be useful for you, okay x plus 1 times x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared so on till x plus alpha power 2 power m minus 2 okay what is alpha alpha is f2 power m primitive this magically becomes x power 2 power m minus 1 plus 1 okay Okay. Yeah, we actually found it's equal to 7. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So, when I cut it out, I meant this greater than or equal to goes away. Just didn't want to make it look ugly. Okay. So, maybe I'll make it look ugly. Okay. It goes away. Okay. So, I mean, if you've been reading, like I asked you to, asked you to do some extra reading on finite fields and all that, you would have found this factorization there. Okay, almost any book, any decent book, halfway decent book on finite fields will talk about this factorization. Okay, so this, why did I put this factorization out? Okay, so if you if you see now, what will what will be this now? This is x plus one. This is x power two power m minus one plus one. What do you think this will be? This will be similar to this guy. One plus x plus x squared plus so on till x power 2 power m minus 2 okay so that's how it will work okay so that's why this is very easy to find if you know what you're looking for but it's okay doesn't matter okay so this is all i'm giving you all this information so that you get some more interest in going and looking at more details on this finite fields reading up a little bit more there's a big world out there which i'm just skimming over okay so you should know that there's lots of stuff that we are not seeing okay in fact if you've been doing the problems i'm sure you would have faced many such many such uh, many such questions okay so the next example i want to do the last set before we uh, move ahead is n equals 31 which means you need alpha belonging to f32 primitive okay so i i'm not going to say i'm not going to even use some further knowledge of alpha the only thing i need is what alpha per 31 is 1 okay so that's fine we can use that then let's do t equals 1. Okay, I want you to find degree of g of x. Don't bother about the actual expression. Okay, simply find the degree.
Okay, do you agree? Do you agree is 5? Do you agree? Alpha, alpha square. Okay, so that so then k becomes 26. Okay, so you get a 31, 26. Okay, it's a Hamming code. I know it's equal to 3. Okay, so you take t equals 2. Likewise, for g of x, you would have degree which is 10. Okay, so we'll see you'll have 10. So you would get a 31, 21. Well, I know it's actually equal to 5 as well. Okay, so equal to 5 code. Okay, so let's do t equals 3. Then g of x would have degree 15. You'll see once again it'll have 15. Okay, in fact, every minimal polynomial in this field has to have degree 5. Why? Let me see. I gave, a, gave some detail in that class which will quickly tell you. That every minimal polynomial, well, except for 0 and 1, 0 and 1 have x and x plus 1, right? Every other minimal polynomial will have degree 5. Why? Degree has to divide 5, exactly. So, see, minimal polynomial, the degree of the minimal polynomial has to divide 5, okay? And what's the, what's the only thing that will divide 5? Or two things that will divide 5? 1 and 5, okay? So, it can either be x, x plus 1 or a fifth degree polynomial, okay? And all of them will show up here. Okay, so you see this will work out 31 16 7 I'm quite sure it's 7 okay so likewise you can keep building okay if you want to find the actual g of x you'll have to go look at the tables and find what the minimal polynomials are okay so remember I, I'm able to find these things without knowing what without tables why was that possible because I find I can find the degree of the minimal polynomial without knowing the table Okay, I cannot find the exact minimal polynomial, but the degree I can find without knowing the table. Okay, so just for fun, you might want to do something like n equals, let's say, I don't know, 511. Okay, let's, let's just try. Okay, n equals 511. Okay, and then let's say t equals, okay, just to pain you a little bit, I'll say t equals 3. Okay, can you find k? Okay, what's your first guess at k if you, if you don't have to find anything? What did I tell you? What will k be? n minus mt. Okay, it will work out to be that way. Okay, so you'll see, you can actually verify that calculation. All you have to find is what? Yeah, the roots of three minimal polynomials. What are the roots of three minimal polynomials? Once you verify that each of them are 9 in number, you do 9 plus 9 plus 9, is 27. You see, k will be, you will see, Okay, you can compute the degree of g of x and you can find k. Okay, so find k. Okay, it's, it's not too painful. Okay, so if we have to ro list roots of f alpha of x, okay, it will be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, right? Then if I have to do for alpha power 3, it will be 3, 6, 12, 24, right? It's a little bit painful. Yeah, I guess we'll stop here. <laughs> then for alpha, alpha power 5 of x, okay, 5, there's a short shortcut to this also. You can quickly find the actual number, okay, the ways of doing it. But let's not, let's not worry about it. You'll see each of these are 27 total. Okay, so you'll see that will happen. So the degree of g of x is 27. So k becomes 511 minus 27, which is what? Let's do this computation. We'll do at least one number, 484. Okay. 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 So once again, if you want to be amazed at how good you have been, okay, how what powerful results this means, you know how to quickly generate. goodness okay how many code words are there 2 to the power 484 that many code words okay and you know even how to quickly generate it right you don't have to worry about anything right given any message you can quickly generate the code word all you do is what polynomial multiplication 
Okay, that's not very hard. It can be done very easily. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's a one-time computation. It's not an online computation, right? So once you find it one time and store it somewhere, it's just a quick way of doing it. It's no problems. Okay. One can do this very very fast. Okay. So one more, few more things to think about. For instance. A linear code is usually described by a basis containing k vectors. So you would think you need k distinct vectors to describe a code. But notice BCH code is described just by the one g of x, is one code word. The reason is all its cyclic shifts become linearly independent and they are also in the code. You get the beautiful thing. Okay, so those are all things to think about. Okay, so so a couple of things that that one you, one doesn't practice okay so first I want to remark is about encoding okay so I want to make a couple of remarks about encoding okay so if you remember a few things I was talking about when we started out we wanted some construction where we can guarantee a certain minimum distance if you wanted to correct 10 errors you should be able to produce a code with minimum distance 21 BCH codes have eminently solved that problem there's no problem that was not enough right when you want to implement it what else do you need need to be able to encode efficiently and decode efficiently okay encoding looks like bch codes have kind of solved the problem but we would like to make it slightly better okay the reason is okay one way of doing encoding is okay if you have a message m which is m0 through mk minus 1 what do you do for encoding you convert it kind of think of it as a polynomial m of x which is m0 m1x plus m k minus 1 x to the power k minus 1 and then do what the corresponding code word is m of x times g of x is there any problem with this anything that you could see as a drawback which is not the most ideal thing in the world as far as decoding is concerned or anything else is concerned okay so one thing that this encoding is not is it's not systematic okay the message bits do not appear by themselves in the code word, right? You're doing m of x times g of x. There's no guarantee that m of x will appear on its own. Okay, it won't in most cases. Okay, so that's a bit of a problem. Okay, the reason why that is very desired is on the decoding side. Once you find a code word, right? If it's systematic, what do we know? We know immediately that what the message was. You don't have to undo this multiplication. Otherwise, in the decoder, what do you have to do? If you find c of x, remember how, how do we decode? We find the closest code word. Right? We always find the closest code word. Okay? From the code word, you have to go back to the message. Right? If you do this encoding, what do you have to do? You have to divide once again at the decoder. Dividing is not a problem. Okay? If you are familiar with your LFSR type circuitry, you know division of polynomials can be done with a simple LFSR. It's very, very easy to divide binary polynomials okay? in, in circuitry. It's not a problem. But then you will have to do it. It's a problem. Okay, it's, you may not you may not like it. There can be some error propagation, etc., etc. All these weird things can happen. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so systematic encoding gets rid of that problem. Okay, but the point is, m of x mapped to m of x times g of x is not going to solve that problem for you. Okay, so what you do is you do some other mapping. Okay, that is some slightly different mapping, which still has a very simple implementation, but it ends up being systematic. Okay, so what is that is what we'll see now. Okay, so what you do is instead of doing this, the systematic encoder in a systematic encoder, you can do the following. Okay, so you take m of x and multiply it with x to the power n minus k. Okay, so what will you get now? If you take this m of x and multiply with x to the power n minus k, what will you get? Okay, in general, you will get a degree n minus 1. Up to degree n minus 1 is now possible. Okay, So you have got that. Okay, Then what I am going to do is, I am going to divide this by g of x. Okay, So you might wonder this division by binary polynomials, maybe it is very difficult. Actually, as I said, it is very easy. There is a simple LFSR circuit for division. Okay, So it is very, very easy. The same, I mean, it does basically the same long division that you do. Okay. can be done very easily you can think about it the long division is not that tough okay suppose you divide this what will you get you will get a quotient and a reminder okay suppose i get some quotient okay i get some quotient and then i get a reminder 
okay what do i know about the de degree of the remainder degree of g of x minus 1 right it's less than or equal to degree of g of x minus 1 what's the degree of g of x r r is what n minus k okay so this will be less than or equal to n minus k minus 1 okay okay that i know will happen r of x will have that degree what about this guy what what will be its smallest power and largest power largest power can be x bar n minus 1 to what is the smallest power possible x bar n minus k no other terms are there in this polynomial there are only terms starting from x bar n minus k and ending at x bar n minus 1 what terms does r of x have starting from constant to n minus k minus 1 so what is done is you push this r of x to this side okay once you push this r of x to this side what do you get x bar n minus k times m of x plus r of x why did i say plus r of x why not minus r of x binary. it's all binary okay equals what is this on the right hand side now i have it's a code word so i know this is a code word okay so instead of mapping m of x to m of x times g of x at the encoder i am going to map m of x to what x to the power n minus k m of x plus r of x where r of x is the remainder when i get when i divide x to the power n minus k m of x by g of x okay okay so one more thing to convince yourself is what two different m of x will not give me the same remainder okay you can convince yourself that one okay it's very easy to write that down okay so okay so why is this mapping systematic yeah the m of x appears by itself in the in one place right do you see that okay so in this this is systematic right Uh, does it matter? Why? Why? Shouldn't, Shouldn't matter, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that's true. Uh, what am I saying? Actually, it doesn't matter. That's not the question. Well, what I meant was, you have to make sure that it's a proper mapping. Okay. Yeah. Basically, once you have systematic, any two m of x will give you two different code words. You should not get two two same code word. That's the thing you should check. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't matter. You're right. Okay. So what you have to check is. you don't get repetition okay so that won't happen here because m of x itself is different two different m of x will not give you the same code okay so that's the systematic uh, version okay so this is how encoding is done in practice if at all you were to implement bch codes this is how you do it okay so maybe in some dsp implementations or software implementations lfsr is not the easiest thing in the world in that case you might want to do something else but most hardware implementations lfsr encoders are most typical okay linear feedback shift registers okay yeah, i'm assuming most people here have seen what an lfsr is in their lifetime no you never seen a linear feedback shift register okay. basically a string of d flip flops with connections going back okay okay so division can be done by lfsr okay so let me write that down okay it's a very simple lfsr circuit okay all right so that's encoding okay so i don't want to make more comments about encoding if the systematic encoder is confusing you just do non systematic i mean just don't worry about don't worry about systematic do non systematic it's okay it's not a big deal doesn't kill you doesn't hurt you too much okay the thing we want to talk next is decoding okay so which is the non trivial issue okay so what i'm going to do with the bch code is kind of set up the problem okay and then come to a state where we'll get a bunch of equations so you'll see actually doing decoding looking for the closest code word we'll convert that into solving a set of equations we already know it can be solved but all can be converted into a set of equations right that's what the syndrome decoder does for linear codes right if you remember okay we'll do some version of syndrome decoder for this okay once we come to that we will stop there kind of for the bch codes okay then i'll we'll do the complete decoder in a slightly larger setting Okay, so that's that's what we'll do now. I'll kind of set up the decoding problem with BCH codes and provide a solution 
in a larger setting for reach solomon codes so you'll see once you know once you can decode reach solomon codes you can also decode bch codes very easily okay it's a, it's a smaller problem okay so that's what we'll do next but i want to set it up carefully because i want to use my parity check matrix over f2 param okay i don't want to use my binary parity check matrix okay so moment i start using my binary parity check matrix i have way too many parity checks okay so and there's all kinds of confusion we saw even before the syndrome decoder is not the simplest thing in the world right we'll have to go through and do that so the way we'll set up the decoding problem as much as possible using the parity check matrix over f2 power m okay and you'll see that's the main that's the main simplification okay it's not too hard actually the setting of the decoder is quite simple okay the setting is very similar to before okay so remember the decoding setting for linear codes i think it's been a been a while maybe it's not very fresh in your memory so you have a co code word c that was transmitted how do you model what happens in the channel sorry add an error vector okay so you add an error vector okay i have a distribution for these error vectors right what's the distribution for an arbitrary error vector e what is the probability of e p par weight of e times 1 minus p to the power n minus weight of e looks like people are revising very well for the quiz okay so it's it's going to be excellent okay so the probability distribution for e is very clear okay Pro what's the probability distribution for c that you assume uniform okay every code word is uniform non code words are zero probability obviously you don't want to transmit a non code word okay so all those things that's a simple probability and i made some argument for why you're better off hunting for e as opposed to c because c is uniform while e is it's a very skewed probability distribution you know where to start from okay so this is c and e and you get r okay so what's the first step in the syndrome decoder with r you find the syndrome okay so for that syndrome i'm going to say i'm going to find s equals h times r transpose and then i try to find e cap from s okay so that's that's the next next the next block okay the most likely error okay then once the output c cap is r plus e cap okay so that's how the that's how the syndrome decoder works we'll try to build a very similar decoder or we'll try to describe the setup of a similar decoder for bch codes okay so what do i mean now this is a code word from a t error correcting bch code okay so all these things i'll start writing down code i'll say block length equals 2 par m minus 1 and i'll say alpha belonging to f2 par m is a primitive element okay so that means what will h be okay you know what h is now once i say that okay right that one alpha alpha square all those things i'll take okay okay so once i start thinking in terms of bch codes it's very useful to convert everything to polynomials okay right because i have a very succinct description for the parity checks in terms of roots of a polynomial okay otherwise this parity check matrix is very difficult to write down okay so for instance instead of c i will think of what c of x instead of e i will think of e of x what is e of x now right any binary vector i can put a polynomial notation right e0 plus e1 x plus e2 x squared it's fine i mean i can do that okay similarly once i have these two instead of r i will think of r of x okay so let's not jump and think of syndrome as a polynomial we'll keep syndrome by itself okay i don't want to think of that as a polynomial we'll stop here okay so now i want you to tell me how many bits will there be here no, no, not bits i mean okay so let me be very careful okay let me take it step by slowly a step at a time what's the dimension of h 2t by n okay but it belongs to what each entry belongs to f2 par m okay remember it's an f2 par m matrix so if i take an arbitrary vector r and do h times r transpose what will s be now remember my matrix h is f2 par m i'm multiplying by some binary vector what will s be in general it will belong to f2 par m okay so this will be in fact a vector in okay so 2t by 1 vector and it will be 
and f2 power m vector okay it's very clear okay it will in general be a f2 power m vector okay right and now using the same see i i gave you an argument for why it is useful to think in terms of polynomials right why because then the parity check evaluation can be written as what evaluation of the polynomial at alpha alpha square so on so when i do h times r transpose what am i actually doing i am evaluating r of x at alpha alpha square so on so what will be if i think of the syndrome vector s as s1 s2 so on till s2t okay okay what will s1 be r of alpha what will s2 be r of alpha square so on so s2t will be r of alpha power 2t okay so actually you have syndromes which are in which is an f2 power m vector okay it's not a binary vector if you go back and think about the syndrome decoder right all your syndromes are binary vectors right you had 2 power n minus k syndromes for each syndrome you had to find what the lowest weight error vector was so now you have a different kind of a problem for each syndrome which is actually in f2 power m okay the, which is actually an f2 power m vector you have to find the lowest weight error vector that lowest weight error vector still remains there's no difference there it still remains okay except that you're doing it differently okay so convince yourself that this is completely equivalent to the syndrome decoding problem there's no difference right what would i do in syndrome decoding i would replace each element of h by its column vector and then do the binary instead of thinking it of thinking of the vector as a 2m times t binary vector i'm thinking of it as a 2t vector in f2 power m i'm not doing anything different okay it's the same as the binary syndrome decoding okay so i have to go ahead and solve this okay this is clear up to this point so given my r of x i can evaluate the 2t syndromes s1 through s2t okay will s1 and s2 be independent what will s2 be in terms of s1 s1 squared right s1 squared what will s4 be s2 squared which is s1 power 4 what will s6 be s3 squared so you see only the odd numbered syndromes are really going to be independent the even numbered ones will all be dependent on the odd ones okay but it's a non linear dependence okay it's not a linear dependence so it's, it's all squaring and all these things okay okay so let's try to do a few more things to write this equations in a different way okay so now i know r of x is c of x plus e of x okay all right so my si the syndromes the ith syndrome si is r of alpha par i it will actually be what c of alpha par i plus e of alpha par i and i know my i is between 1 and 2t so what is c of alpha par i 0 right it will vanish c of alpha par i will vanish okay so the only thing you get here is e of alpha par okay so that's the next step okay remember these syndromes s i i can actually evaluate i can evaluate them as r of alpha par i okay but i know it is the same as e of alpha par i okay so all these are the same type of arguments i did for the syndrome decoder right i know even though i'm evaluating the syndrome with the received vector i know it is actually the it's actually h times e transpose right it's the same thing okay any questions on this okay right all right so next let's look at this e of x a little bit more closely i'll, I'll write it a little bit differently okay so i'll say suppose e of x is c e of x usually you think of it as e0 right what do you think of it as e0 plus e1x plus e2x squared plus e n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 right this is what you think of it as okay suppose what this is actually 
x to the power i1 plus x to the power i2 i'm sorry i should i should write x the same way no I'm sorry apologize for this x to the power i1 plus x to the power i2 plus so on till x to the power i w so what am i saying here when i say this what am i saying i am saying the ones in e are at positions i1 i2 so that's what i should suppose suppose ones in e are at positions i1 i2 so on till i w okay so that implies all this will happen okay so so what else am i saying here i'm saying weight of e equals what is w okay so that's what i'm supposing is that clear okay once that happens this you can write okay so now let's let's use this form of e of x in the syndrome computation okay so you see the syndrome si for okay maybe i'll use sj here okay because i've used i1 already for one j between 1 and 2t sj is going to be what right e of alpha power j which is alpha power j raised to the power i1 plus alpha power j raised to the power i2 so on till alpha power j raised to the power i w okay so the standard trick here right to get rid of these alphas right is to basically do the reverse in this exponentiation so i can do a write a write a simple well it's it's a very simple thing i don't even want to call it a trick okay so it's a very easy thing to see i'll write this as alpha power i1 raised to the power j plus alpha power i2 raised to the power j plus so on till alpha power i w raised to the power j okay so you notice in each of these syndrome equations i1 and i2 and i w do not appear by themselves they appear as powers of alpha alpha power i2 i1 alpha power i2 so on till alpha power i w okay so this i1 through i w are what actually the locations of the errors what is the aim of the decoder the decoder's aim is to find i1 to i w okay once you find i1 to i w you are done okay that's the aim of the decoder the decoder's aim is to find e hat which is actually finding the error vector or the error polynomial once you say the error error polynomial has once only in these locations then the decoder's aim is pretty much to find those locations once you find the locations you can go there and flip that bit okay you know exactly what to do okay so now we see instead of trying to find the locations of the errors i1 through iw we'll say we'll try to find elements of f2 par m alpha par i1 alpha par i2 through alpha par iw okay so i1 through iw are what integers from 0 to n minus 1 instead of looking for integers i look for elements in f2 power m which are alpha par i1 alpha par i2 so on till alpha par i w okay so instead of thinking of error locations as i1 through i w i will think of error locations as alpha par i1 through alpha par i2 alpha par i2 doesn't make any difference just put an alpha down below okay so it's the same thing except that the advantage in thinking about it that way is my syndromes belong to f2 par m my equations are in f2 par m let me also solve them in f2 par m as opposed to solving them in integers right why do you want to complicate the thing that okay so once you think of it that way you you are solving for equations in what in f2 par m you want the solution to be in f2 par m which is just an easier way to think about the problem okay so that's why you'll see one of the first step that's done is people introduce what are called error locators okay i'll capital xi okay i will say is okay so i think i need something else here sorry xl okay is alpha pa i sub l okay okay for l between 1 and w once i do that i can write my syndromes xj for j between 1 and 2t as what i'm sorry this is not xj it's sj 
it's getting too late in the afternoon sj is what x1 power j plus x2 power j plus so on till xw power j okay so my the equations these are this is the equation i need to solve okay so i'm going to write it explicitly for each j so that you can see how these equations look okay so what are these things now s1 equals x1 plus x2 plus xw s2 equals x1 plus x2 plus no x1 squared plus x2 squared plus xw squared s3 equals x1 part 3 plus x2 part 3 plus xw part 3 okay so on till s2t which is x1 part 2t plus x2 part 2t plus so on till xw part okay so these are my actual equations that i have to solve okay what do i have to solve for solve these equations for for what x1 x2 so on till xw what else do you have to find there is something hidden in this I'm sorry w is also hidden right you have to find w also okay that's also hidden yeah so we could do that yeah minimum possible value for w right why do i want to look for the minimum possible value for w Uh, that's my most likely error vector so that i can do my ml decoding over the binary symmetric channel okay so it's useful to keep all these things in mind so once i write these equations down there are several things you can infer immediately from these equations first of all are these linear equations no right these are equations with variables <coughs> and constants in which field f2 par m okay s1 through s2t remember they are from f2 par m okay and these are clearly non linear equations they involve power sums okay and are they all independent can you quickly identify some dependence yeah for instance if you square the first equation what do you get the second equation right remember you are in characteristic 2 right when you square you will get that and then likewise you'll see all the even equations can be thrown out so at best you can expect only how many equations t equations okay only t equations are there okay so one can guess that if w were to be less than or equal to t then you could you will probably get a unique solution okay since you have t equations which are supposedly dependent up to t equations and w is less than or equal to t one can hope for unique solution if w is greater than t you can only hope to do a list of all possible solutions and in fact those things are very very difficult okay for w greater than or equal to t finding the solution is very tough okay so it's been there are all kinds of ideas about how to exactly find it there is no easy way of doing it okay so what we'll do to attack this is i mean it's it's quite a nasty equation right i mean it's not a linear equation it's tough to solve okay but if we can solve it if we can solve it look at the benefits okay if we can solve it we actually have a reasonably implementable decoder remember this is only 2t equation or t equations if you want to correct 20 errors you have to solve only 20 equations okay so it's not see you never had that situation before you just have to solve 20 equations that's all we previously when we were looking at it we we we, had, we never had this problem it's a, such a simple issue okay if the problem was always we have to try out so many things so many things so many things because we did not have a nice algebraic form for those equations so finally when you get these algebraic forms you can maybe solve for it without any problem okay so if we have an efficient method for solving this set of equations we have an efficient decoder okay that is the message that i want to give you by this by writing it down okay but beyond this we won't proceed in the bch case okay we will actually do something called reed solomon codes which are a generalized version of bch codes and for that decoding you'll see you will also end up with an equation which is actually a general case of this it's more complicated than this and we'll see how to solve those once you see that this can also be solved okay so that will be the way in which i'm going to approach this decoding issue at least okay any questions on how these equations worked out clear okay so as usual we're going to see an example for n equals 
seeing how these equations are and I'm going to ask you to solve it for n equals 15. It's not that difficult. You'll, you'll have to solve it in only f16. You can try it. We can do decoding. Okay. Kt equals 1 is really trivial. Okay. It's the Hamming code. You know how to decode the Hamming code. You can do it even in the binary case. Right. Should do you want to try t equals 1 or not? How many of you here want to try t equals 1? Okay. We'll try t equals 1. I think we should try t equals 1. Okay. So we'll start with the alpha belonging to f16. Satisfying alpha power 15 is 1 and then alpha power 4 is 1 plus alpha. Okay. So I'm going to try t equals 1. I'll give you r of x. Okay. When I give you r of x, I'm actually giving you r, the entire received vector. You have to give me what? C of x is. Is that clear? That's the problem. Okay. I'm going to say x plus x power 4. Let me see. You will get stuck, believe me. The W is a problem. Okay. <laughs> So to deal with W, best way for dealing with W is try to start with W equals 0. If that doesn't work, go to W equals 1. If that doesn't work, go to W equals 2, etc. Okay. So we will not see if T equals 1, we will only go to W equals T. We won't go beyond that. Okay. So that's the logic here. Start with first W equals 0, which means what? No errors, which means what? All syndromes must be 0. So once you compute the first syndrome, you'll know whether w equals 0 is valid or not. Then all you have to do is, okay, in the Hamming code, actually w equals 1 will always work. So it's not a problem. Okay, you can go back and refer to your tables. I think I have written down this table several times for, or you can use this, many of these relationships. In this case, it is very easy. So what is the first step in the decoder? Finding the syndrome, right? In this case, you are finding S1 and S2. Okay, S2 you do not really have to find. What is S1? 1. Okay. So obviously, W equals 0 is ruled out. Okay. So now, if you say W equals 1, what should S1 be? Equals X1. Okay, so you take W equals 1. Right? So what is X1? Equals 1, that's all, which is alpha power 0, which means there was an error in the 0th position. Right? Is that clear? Okay, error in the 0th position and c of x became 1 plus x plus x power 4. Okay, so it is very simple. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so it is a very easy case. Maybe it is too easy for people to try out. Okay, that implies i1 equals 0 and e of x equals 1 and e hat of x. Okay, remember that and c hat of x is. 1 plus x plus x power 4. Okay, so try another case. I'll give you some complicated one which will make you look for x power 10 plus x power 7. Even though it looks fancy, you won't need the tables if you are smart. You can just use. <laughs> a 
okay so what is s1 You mean give see I need s1 as a power of alpha okay, that's the only thing alpha par 6 okay so there is a there's an easier way to figure it out if you haven't it's okay this equals x1 assuming w equals 1 that implies what i1 is 6 okay there's one error and you've nicely solved it e hat of x is x power 6 and c hat of x is x power 6 plus x power 7 plus x power 10 I don't know man. you tell me alpha power 4 plus alpha equals 1 you multiply that by alpha power 6 you will get alpha power 10 plus alpha plus. <laughs> I don't know mm, I'm using such simple tricks to give you examples okay so t equals 1 as you're saying is very easy okay Usually it's, it's really nothing much. Okay? It's just a Hamming code and you know how to decode it in binary. The non-trivial thing is to do t equals 2. Okay, so that's the first time we'll do a t equals 2. Okay, I'm going to just throw out an r of x. Okay, I have no idea of how the solution is going to work out. Okay, maybe, maybe I have some idea. Maybe I'll write down something which is interesting. Okay, so... Okay, that's my R of X. Okay, for T equals 2, you need what? S1 and S2. Oh, well, S3, you are right. Yeah, S2 will be very easy. S1 and S3 you need. What is S1? Let me see. Alpha power 11. Alpha Everybody agrees? Okay. What is S3? Okay. Well, what will be S2? Let's compute everything. What will S2 be? Alpha power 22, which is the same as? Alpha power 7. What will be S3? Alpha power 10. Okay. How many of you agree? If you disagree, let me know. Then S4 will work out to be alpha power. What will S4 be? Square of S2, right? Which is alpha power? 14 okay again let's let's say there were two errors okay i know we can correct up to two errors so maybe i'll start with assuming there were two errors okay so there's a way to properly do it assuming zero error one error two error we'll see later on just for now we'll say let's say there are two errors and then what is x1 sh s1 should be x1 plus x2 what will s2 be x1 squared plus x2 squared what will s3 be x1 power 3 plus x1 power 4 Oh, I'm x2 power 4, I'm sorry. And what will s4 be? x1 for, uh, power 4 plus x2 power 4. Okay, I know these two are dependent, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Okay, I know those two are dependent, so I won't get anything useful out of it. Can you solve these two equations? Is the question. x1 plus x2 equals alpha power 11. And x1 power 3 plus x2 power 3 equals alpha part 10 if you can solve it in f16 if you can find two elements of f16 right they have to be elements of f16 right obviously alpha part something okay two elements of f16 which solve this equation what have you done you've actually done decoding okay so go ahead let me see who's going to give me the two elements five instead of ten now okay somebody has to check and tell me Can anyone check this? What is S3? So you got 6. Okay, it looks like this alpha power 10 is in doubt. Yeah, 
yeah i think i believe 5 okay i think 5 is the right answer i have done a back calculation in my head which tells me 5 should be the right answer i could be wrong but looks like 5 is the right answer okay okay so you see the problem here right immediately you see it's a non linear equation x1 power 3 plus x2 power 3 you don't know what to do with it okay what would be your first instinct what will you try first if you see two equations like this different people have different first instincts <laughs> what's the problem okay one easy thing is first equation is linear no so i can say x2 equals alpha power 11 plus x1 right and then probably maybe i'll plug that in here then what will i get i'll get a degree 3 who knows maybe a degree less than 3 who knows you know i mean maybe i'll get a quadratic equation maybe something will happen you know right but even if you get a quadratic equation how do you solve that in in f16 it's not very clear right right why is it difficult to solve a quadratic equation in f16 so maybe square root you can define you have, you have powers but what can you not define there's a division by 2 which you cannot do in a characteristic 2 field okay so right what's your formula for this quadratic field the, the solution for quadratic equations minus b plus or minus all that is fine but divided by 2a so you can't you can't do that 2 will 2 will kill you you can't divide by 2 so that's a problem so you can't directly solve also but what's the only way what else can we do how else can we solve yeah just substitute and try why because f16 has at the end of the day only 15 elements right what's so hard i mean you are able to solve the reason why you need all those things is because you can't substitute just substitute and check you will get it okay there's nothing and in fact even in the most complicated implementations that is what is done you simply substitute one element after the other to check if it's the root okay well it, it's done in a more slightly different way but pretty much that is what is done that's the only thing you can do okay so let's try that okay i'm going to take two more minutes hope it's so i'm i have to teach till 4:30 no so i'm doing fine okay so let's do x2 will be alpha power 11 plus x1 i'll put that back in here so i get x1 plus x1 power 3 plus what will i get if i raise it raise this to the power 3 okay i'll do it in two steps i'll say alpha power 11 plus x1 square times alpha power 11 plus x1 can i do this so why did i do this square first square is very easy no i know i know how to square okay so then try to do a simplification here you see the x1 power 3 will cancel it cancels and you will get a quadratic what's the quadratic you get alpha power 11 x1 squared am i right plus alpha power 7 x1 plus Alpha pi 18 plus alpha plus alpha pi 5. What is that? Alpha pi 3. Okay, so I'm being told this is my equation. Maybe I can clear out 3 here. Okay, I can multiply throughout by alpha pi minus 3 so that I'll get some alpha pi 8 x1 squared plus or maybe multiply throughout by alpha pi minus 11. Do one of those things. Okay, did I get that right? Oh, plus alpha pi 5. Yeah, simplify and tell me what the final thing is. Alpha pi 11. Everybody is convinced. Okay, so the equation that I'm actually getting is x1 squared plus alpha pi minus 4, which is actually 11, no? Hmm. X x1 plus 1 equals 0. Is this the equation? Okay. Yeah. I think. Go ahead. Substitute. Tell me one x1 which can possibly solve this. Try numbers between well between seven and eight. Alpha plus seven and alpha plus eight. Okay, do you get that? Do you get x x one equals alpha plus seven is okay? Okay, you will get two solutions. One will be x1 equals alpha power 7. Other will be x1 equals alpha power 8. Do you get that? You agree or did you check? You get that? Yeah. Then 7 will also be a solution. Okay. So those are the two solutions. And what will be? What do you think will be the x2 corresponding to each of these things? Alpha power 8 and alpha power 7. Okay. 
Okay, so what are the two error locations then? Seventh and eighth position. So what's my e hat? X bar seven plus X bar eight. So what's my C hat? X bar nine plus X bar eight plus X bar seven plus X bar five plus X. Okay, that's my C hat. Okay, so if you go back and think about how I started off defining decoders for linear codes and optimal decoders, right? What did we do? Rem imagine that uh, picture, star picture. Okay, so I have two power seven code words in this case. It's a 15 seven code, right? The two are correcting one. I have two power seven code words, which is actually what 128 code words of length 15. From the received vector, the closest code word will be this c hat of x okay in this case it will be no i mean there is no code word at distance 1 away this is code word at distance 2 away okay it will be this code word. okay so if we have not done it by brute force we have done it by solving an algebraic equation which came from looking at the syndrome over f16 okay so that's the that's it okay so we'll stop here